Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is Brian Mulroney, and this presentation is about device imaging practices. This presentation was prepared for course CNT 64018 at the University of Central Florida in February of 2017. First, some background regarding imaging. The acquiring and preserving of evidence is critical in performing digital forensics. Your preparation, your process, and your documentation are extremely important. Without being prepared, following a good process, and properly documenting, your investigation could be ruined. In general, analysis of digital evidence will normally be performed either on data copies or device images. It is important to use the correct terminology regarding digital evidence. One type of digital evidence may be data copies. Data copies are copies of specific pieces of data. This could be a file or a folder full of files. There are many negatives about using copies as evidence in that they apply only to available files to the operating system. Data copies can give an incomplete overall picture. Due to these, they have a weaker overall evidentiary value. Some benefits of copies are that little training is required to acquire data copies. They're inexpensive to acquire because they don't take as much storage or training, and they can be quickly analyzed. In some cases, data copies are all you'll have. Unusual machines or networked locations may only have data copying available as a way to acquire evidence. More likely, you'll be dealing with device images. Images are complete copies of an entire storage media. Some drawbacks of using device images is that it's a much slower process. There's typically a requirement for very large storage devices because a device image storage device will normally need to be at least as big or bigger than the device that you are acquiring the image from. Device imaging may require specialized equipment and may require specialized training. Some of the benefits of using device images are that they have much stronger evidentiary value due to having enhanced continuity and integrity over data copies. Additional evidence, such as timestamps, can be preserved with device images that are not preserved with data copies. And very importantly, deleted and hidden data can be analyzed when using device images. An important part of acquiring digital evidence is that it is done in a forensically sound manner. Data acquisition should follow established industry-wide guidelines, such as those by the National Institute of Standards and Technology. Using these industry-wide accepted guidelines will strengthen the evidentiary value of the evidence. Whenever technically possible, certain prerequisites and requirements should always be followed. Some standard prerequisites to acquiring images are that write blocking should be established. This could be software or hardware based. Write blocking is necessary to prove that you do not make changes to the device that you're acquiring. It's important that your target or destination media has been identified, cataloged, and documented. 
also important that sufficient time and storage is available to inquire the entire source. With some systems, there may be security measures in place that might need to be disabled before you'll be able to do a full image. Some standard acquisition requirements are important to be followed in order to have a strong evidentiary value for your evidence. One is that a bitstream image or duplicate of the entire source media should be made. It's important that the original media is not altered. It's important that your imaging process records any errors that occur. The image must be able to be verified for authenticity that it's an accurate, unaltered image that's equal to the original. Also, the process that you use for acquisition and the tools that you use for your acquisition must be documented so that you can show that they're following best practices. Before performing an acquisition, it's important that you prepare your destination media. This media should be documented and cataloged and sterilized. You should never assume that media is sterile unless you have sterilized it first. This includes brand new media from a manufacturer. A common example would be if you have USB based storage. Your USB storage may come with utilities, value added utilities from the manufacturer. Those are not necessary for your acquisition and should be sterilized before you would use that media by erasing those. An example of a way to sterilize a media is to perform a complete pass of writing zeros to every spot of the target media. As we're focusing on Linux, we'll be showing a few Linux commands throughout this presentation. One command that's useful would be zeroing out a drive. To zero out a drive would be to sterilize the drive by writing a zero to every, every location on the drive. Note this will make the drive completely empty. It will not have any partitions and will not mount unless you later format it. First, you would need to mount the drive in a writable mode so that you can access it. By using the dd command, shown on the screen, where you target the device that you have loaded for erasing, you can use the special device called zero, which is a stream of zeros to write to every location on the target device. Be extremely careful with this type of command because it will erase the entire device that you target with the OF or output file um, parameter. And if you accidentally point that at the wrong drive, you will start erasing it. It's important that whatever process you use for sterilizing your media is a documented, repeatable process where you can show that you have put thought into how you're performing it and that you can document that you have performed it. This is especially important if you're going to be reusing media that you have ever used for an analysis before. In many cases, buying new media and then sterilizing it is preferred over reusing old media. It is extremely important to authenticate your images. By authenticating your images, you're, you're actually performing a certification of your images that they are authentic to the source. One of the ways to do this is using a hash function. Hash functions are utilities that produce a unique signature or digital fingerprint of media and images. 
Some commonly accepted functions for imaging would be MD5 and the Shaw family. One thing you can do to strengthen your authentication process is to use multiple hash functions um, because that way even if a collision is available with one it's less likely to also be available simultaneously with another hash function. Um, some hash functions are much slower than others. MD5 is a fairly fast um, hash function where you know, SHA-512 would be a slow one. Just like with everything else, it's important to have a documented process for performing your authentication. Authentication should be performed multiple times in multiple places. It should be performed on the original source media in order to get the original hash values from where the source is. As soon as you create an image, it should be performed on the image that you create. Generally, this is not going to be immediately used, so it's worthwhile to, again, hash your image prior to analyzing it. That way you can ensure that it has not changed or accidentally been replaced or anything else since the time of its creation. For good measure, you should also perform a hash after your analysis of an image. That way you can ensure that your image was not compromised as an artifact of your analysis. There are several imaging utilities available with Linux. Some of the ones available for the CLI are shown below. It's important to remember that the prerequisites and the requirements we discussed previously are adhered to. One of the original Linux utilities for making raw image copies is the DD command. DD is useful because it produces an output that is readable by most analysis utilities. There are a few patches and forks of DD that are also popular. One is DCFLDD. This is an enhanced version of DD that the U.S. Department of Defense created. It includes many automation features, but it was a fork of the DD code base and it's now getting outdated. From the main DD code base is a patch version called DC3DD. This was also introduced by the U.S. Department of Defense. It also includes additional automation features over the regular DD command. These include things like creating hashes every gigabyte or performing more automated error and log um, file creation. In addition to the CLI utilities, there are many packaged utilities um, that are menu or GUI driven available for Linux. Some of the more popular ones are Part Image, Clonezilla, Mondu Rescue, Redo Backup and Recovery, and the Trinity Rescue Kit. When using these sort of utilities, they may be appropriate if you're using a less technically trained investigator that is remote and the acquisition is urgent. A drawback of using package utilities is that a lot of the functionality is going to be hidden behind the menus or the graphical user interfaces. So it's harder for you to have a exact understanding of what functions are being performed at which time. Once you have acquired an image, in order to analyze it, you'll normally need to store it for later analysis and move it to other places. Um, as we discussed earlier, the DD type image formats will create an image file that's the size of the entire original source drive. Now that's the whole capability of the original drive, not just the sum of the visible files. So these can get extremely large. Now many image files can be efficiently compressed, 
Um, this is useful if there's a lot of completely empty and zeroed out space on the source media. If the source media is full of random data in the unallocated space, it won't compress very well. But a lot of times you'll find large sections of zeros on source media and those will extremely well compress. Um, it's okay to compress your image file. Um, you can also encrypt your image file. Um, you can use an encrypting program like GPG that also combines with a compression file um, to transfer your image file over insecure transmission lines like the public internet you can use a secure VPN tunnel. Now what's important is that the authentication process for your files is still adhered to. So all the hashing of creating the fingerprints that we talked about earlier are important to be performed anytime your images moved or stored. So yes you could send your image file to a, another investigator or you could get your field tech to send it to you over the internet. Um, you'll want to perform the hashing functions again and compare them with the hashing functions that were performed during acquisition to ensure that the transmission of the file did not change the file. In some situations copying files is sufficient or necessary. Uh, some examples of this would be when you're dealing with virtual disks um, such as VMware disks or encrypted file containers. Um, these are basically virtual file systems that are all contained in one file. Um, in many cases you're not going to be able to image the media that holds that file and getting that file itself may be sufficient. And sometimes it's necessary to copy files because you will not have actual access to the storage media. Um, this would be for example network resources. Um, that, that includes files that are in the cloud, you know, anything that's on an, a remote file store. You're not likely going to be able to go to that remote data center of a cloud vendor and take the drives out of their machine and image them. Um, so copying the files is going to be sufficient or necessary in those situations. Other times where copying files may be required would be if you're dealing with very complicated storage media, such as a network attached storage device or an entire SAN array. Um, imaging those entire arrays may be very prohibited for you. Once you've got your image file, you'll need to be able to use your file. Um, you, to use your image file, uh, you'll need to use analysis software. Um, most commercial suites will read multiple capture formats. Um, you can analyze a file with you know, a hex editor or you can use a many, many, many different utilities to analyze files. Um, you can use your image file by restoring it to a media. This is basically the reverse of the DD command we ran earlier. Um, this is if you have an entire um, image clone to make a new media that's exactly the same as the old media. This way you'll have physical media. In some cases you'll need to do that. This is becoming less popular in most analysis where analyzing the image file is what you're going to be doing and not actually restoring it to a piece of media and then analyzing the new piece of media. These are the references that were used during this presentation. Um, I found this book by Bruce Nickel, the second reference here, um, is very comprehensive, has a lot of practical examples of using Linux-based um, evidence handling. Um, so if you're looking for a read that you can maybe find a copy of this book, um, Practical Forensics Imaging, Securing Digital Evidence with Linux Tools, um, I think it's a pretty good reference for uh, what we're covering. Well, that concludes the presentation on digital imaging practices. Uh, again, my name is Brian Mulroney. If you have any questions, you can email me at brian.mulroney at knights.ucf.edu.
Thank you.